understand principal component analysis by doing an example and manually calculate it in an Excel. So we have an example here where you have three samples and three features. Right, the first thing you will do is that you calculate the mean and the standard deviation of each feature, okay, which is shown here. And then you standardize the data. Right, to do that, you take each value from the feature, you minus the corresponding mean and divide by the corresponding um, standard deviation of that particular feature. Right, you do it for all the features, A, B, and C. Right, and then after doing that, if you calculate the mean and standard deviation of this standardized data, you will find that all features would have a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. And we have successfully standardized the data. After that, you want to calculate the covariance for all features combinations. Um, you try to find uh, for two features, for two features, how linearly related they are, right? And you compare all of them. You compare A with A, you compare A with B, you compare all with Cs, so on and so forth, right? Um, so to calculate that, um, for instance, if you want to find the covariance between A and B, what you're doing here is that you take the first value from A, right? You minus um, the mean of A, right? And you times the first value from B minus the corresponding mean, right, which is zero here. After you do this multiplication, right, you do the same for the second and third row, right, second and third row, and you sum all of them, divide by the number of samples that you have, right. Then you will get your uh, covariance for a for comparing a and b. Right? You do it for all of them, and then you have this features map where you have feature a and b, a, b and c in both the column, the feed, the row and the column, and then um, you just you know plot in the data right that you calculated before. So you have these features table of feature metrics. Um, so to give you a bit of intuition, the reason of doing this is that um, you want to find how, how two features are linearly correlated. For example, a and b. If I plot a and b using the original data. You can see that they are not that correlated, right? Linearly, so you get a much smaller um, covariance value here, zero point two eight, right? Now, if you compare B and C, right? B and C, because C is essentially any value from B times two, right? two times two you get four, one times two you get two, four times two you get eight, right? So they are strongly linearly related. And you get a very high um, covariance value, right? And if you print out this table, let's say you change to 80, um, so the covariance value decreases, and you look at the chart, it's not that linearly related anymore, right? So I hope you appreciate the idea of the objective we are doing this. We are trying to find how linearly related um, between two features, and then you go to the fourth step where you calculate the eigenvector and eigenvalues. So to understand that, I have a hypothetical example. Let's say you have these 3 times 3 matrix. When you multiply these 3 times 3 matrix with a 3 times 1 vector, you get a vector of 3 times 1. Right? And in this particular example, this 3 times 1 vector can actually be rewritten as the value 3 times the vector 1, 1, 2. Right? Because this will give you the same answer as this. 3 times 1, you get 3. 3 times 1, you get 3. And 3 times 2, you get 6. So these two are the same, right? So this is a characteristic of matrix where you can have um, two vectors that are the same from both sides of the equation. And you have a particular value that tells you um, how you can scale this particular vector, right? So the vector here, we call it eigenvector. And the value here, lambda, you call it eigenvalue, right? So the challenge or the thing that we want to do at this step is that we want to find the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of our um, feature table that we got from the last step. So the calculation for eigenvalues is shown here. Um, 
these are all mathematics. I won't um, explain in details, but for those who are interested, feel free to take a look. But the more important thing is to get an intuition here. Um, so the calculation return you three eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors. And all these pairs fulfill the equations where the values that you get from the left is the same as the value that you get from the right. And I show you the calculations manually here, right? You have the first um, eigenvalue of 1.52 and eigenvector of you know, 0 0.42, so on and so forth. And then if you calculate the matrix multiplication, right, of the equation from the left, right, you get this vector. And if you multiply the eigenvalues with the eigenvector, you get the same value, right? So this is to prove that these are the real eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? And you get three of them, okay? And then you sort them in descending order with the highest eigen values come first and the corresponding um, eigenvectors. So you get like an eigen um, factor matrix. Um, to give you a bit intuition, because this step is very important for a principal component um, in terms of doing dimensional reduction. Um, if you look at this um, equation, right, you can see that um, since these two vectors are the same, right, the eigenvalue here is telling you the, the skill or the importance um, of the data that you have here, right? So whenever you, um, when you do this sorting, right, you're essentially uh, sorting the most important eigenvectors in the first column. But right? this is very important, right? Because after this step, all you do is that you at the last step, you multiply your standardized data that you get from step two here. You just multiply it with your sorted eigenvector matrix and you get your principal components. Because you have already sorted um, by eigenvalues, you know that the most important principal components would be at the first um, column, right? So now you have your principal component table. Um, to do dimensional reduction, right, you have three features, if let's say you just want to reduce to just one dimension, um, you just take the first column, just the first principal component. Right? There you have it. You have your principal uh, components analysis dimension reduction. Right? Um, so I have also written a simple Python script where I uh, loaded the same data that I've shown you in the Excel. And there are two calculations here. Um, the PCA calculation manually where I manually calculate each step, the standardized data, calculate the covariance, calculate the corresponding um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and assuming that we are taking all principal components, right? And then the final step is that we multiply our standardized data with our eigenvector matrix, okay? And then you can do this all in just one step using um, sklearn library, um, and then I printed everything out. So if you run the script, you should get uh, the results. And it's the same as the one that we calculated here. Right? And one note is that you will notice that uh, sometimes the, the PCA that you calculated might have in each um, column. Right? Sometimes the positive and negative value are the opposite. For instance, you have minus plus plus and plus minus minus. The reason is because uh, when you try to solve the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, right, both positive values and negative values can fulfill this equation. So you can get both, right, sometimes. It doesn't affect the final principal component analysis. And the Excel files and also the Python script are in the link below. Feel free to play around with it. I hope this presentation gives you a bit insights of how principal component analysis works. Thank you.